Yes. Okay. All right, and we're live, Dallas. All righty. Welcome everyone to Inclusive Theater of West New York's reading of three one-act plays, all written by local playwright, Madison Sedler. Tonight we have three plays for you, as I just said. Project Pluto, Real Friends, and The Chevrolet. My name is Dallas Taylor. I'm the Artistic Director of Inclusive Theater of West New York. We have a very nice show to put on for you tonight. Hope you enjoy. Up first, we have Project Pluto, directed by Virginia Brannon. All right. It looks like we have everyone in attendance. Hudson, do you need something? Hender dog, there's, there's something wrong with my Zoom. It won't let me click out of the thing and then, then and the mute button isn't working. Of course it's not. Hudson, for the hundredth time, my name is Ms. Henderson. Just go to the bottom left of the corner of your screen and but I, I know where the buttons are, Henderski, but 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 the buttons are this this light gray color and they won't let me click on it. It's Ms. Henderson. All right, for simplicity's sake, you can stay on and you'll be the first player in our today's review, okay? Radio Enderino. Oh boy. Okay, class. Sorry about that. Looks like player one for our solar system review is going to be Hudson Abadir. And we'll use the random number generator for the next player. Looks like player number two is Ella Clark. And last but not least, player number three will be Kyla Miller. Let's go over the rules again. Each one of you will be able to pick an amount from one of the six categories. Whoever has the most points at the end of class will win five extra credits on the next test. Some of us need more than others. Yeah, like Hudson. Shut up, Kyle. Duh. Hudson? Sorry. As you all know, we are still in the solar system. The categories are galaxy far, far away, order, order, order in the system, Mars bars, loon on the moon, space culture, now that will be space and pop culture and Project Pluto. We'll start with the top of the class. Ella, you can go first. I would like to start with order, order for 200 points. What is the name of the last planet in our solar system? Is the answer Neptune? Correct. Moving on to Kyla. Whoa, 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 handy stick, that, that's, the, that's the wrong answer. No, Hudson, Ella is right. Neptune is the last planet in the solar system. No, no, she's not right. There is a smaller, more adorable planet that comes after Neptune. Hudson, we've been over this. Well, we need to go over it again. Oh my God. Oh, come on. Did, did none of you learn the planet song? The planet? I saw Mercury, then Venus. I saw the Earth, then Hudson. I saw Jupiter, then Saturn. Hudson. Uranus, then Neptune, then Hudson, Pluto. please, 
for the love of all that is good, save the singing for the choir. The hand around my, I got kicked out of choir. You don't say. They said I was too loud and off key for choir. I have something called study hall now. Can we please move on, Hudson? That depends. Are you going to take Ellis points away? No. Then I am afraid we are at an impasse. Hudson, what if I gave you 10 points for being a good sport and moving on with a game? Are you kidding? I will take your bribe for now. Miss Henderson, that's not fair. Life isn't fair, kiddo. Let's just keep it going. Kyla, please pick a category. Uh, space culture for 1,000, please. <laughs> a little overzealous there, aren't we, Kyla? Hudson? Yeah, yeah, I know. Stop interrupting. Kyla, pick another question. But I want that one. Trust me, you don't. Yeah, I do. It's like the only category I know anything about. So, like, I got to pick and go for the gold, you know? Oh, Lord, help me. Okay. In what year was Pluto officially reclassified as a dwarf planet. Uh, objection, your honor. Here we go. No, Pluto is and forever will be considered one of the nine planets in our sol solar system. And honestly, I think it's absurd that the education system refuses to keep the planet in our history books. Hudson? What will stop scientists from changing everything if we, if we let them get away with this? Uh, will they suddenly decide that the Earth is not a planet anymore because it's habitable to your kind, unlike every other planet in the solar system? I think not. Hudson, I really need a less of interjections from you today. I'm just trying to get you all to learn something and maybe have a little fun doing it. Now, Kyla, your answer. Um, what was the question? In what year was Pluto officially reclassified as a dwarf planet? Um, 1992? No, I'm sorry. The answer is 2006. That's minus a thousand points for you. I thought space culture would be like, what is that cute hairstyle when you put your hair up in pigtail buns? What does that have to do with the solar system? In solar sy system, it's in space, they're called space buns, duh. Oh, boy. So you see why her nickname is Kyle, duh. You're just so rude, Hudson. I didn't make it up. Doesn't matter. It's still mean to say. But everyone calls you Ella, even though your name is Cinderella. What? But isn't Ella short for Cinderella? We're getting way off topic here. Uh, let them go at it. I want to see where this goes. My name is Ella. Just Ella. Then what am I thinking of? The Disney movie? No, that doesn't sound right. Ha, huh, he's so weird. Hey, I can hear you. I know. Okay, so some nicknames are nice, and, and some nicknames are mean? What? Yes! Interesting. Oh, uh, Hender uh, you don't mind the nicknames I'm giving you, right? Well... I, I didn't think so. Let's just get back to the game. Hudson, please pick a category. Obviously, I'm going to pick Project Pluto for 1,000. Of course you are. So, how long does it take Pluto to orbit around the sun? 248 human years. That is correct. Beginner's luck. 
Oh, but on Pluto, uh, we just call it one rotation. You know how you have things celebrating uh, 16 rotations around the sun? Uh, what is it called? A sweet 16? Uh, yes. Right, right. That sounds right. Uh, well, on Pluto, we have a very similar celebration. It's a little bit different since you all celebrate with colorful air holders and um, oh, uh, loud blowy things and uh, oh, triangle hats. And uh, oh, your days are much shorter. I think the conversion is like uh, six human days equals one Plutonian days. Oh, but every 60 Plutonian days, we get together with our family and friends and have a big party with our whole community. It's called Gorgon Glorm. I guess it would be like uh, Earth New Year's? Oh, brother. Do you have something to say? No, I believe it's my turn. I'll take Galaxy Far, Far Away for 1,000 points, please. Oh, thank God. Okay, identify the term. The vertical stretching and horizontal compression of objects into a long, thin shapes in a very strong, non-homogeneous gravitational field. Oh, um, shoot. I know this one. Uh... <sighs> I know this one. But it's not your term, Hudson. But I know the answer. Oh my God, Hudson. Will you chill out? Honestly, I wish. This planet is so hot, I don't know how you can stand it. Miss Henderson, he's being impossible. Hudson, if you don't stop interrupting, I'm going to have to give you a detention. I know you're a little lost but this review is for you. So you can catch up the same level as the rest of the kids. Your test scores are not great. I know this is hard, but you live here now on earth. You have to really start trying. I, I, I am trying. You're right. Well, how would you like it if, if your parents force you to go to another school? Uh, and not only that, but you have to use this 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 outdated piece of technology to, to communicate with a species that you, you do not understand in a language that isn't native to you. What? Do you not speak English? No. No, my, my native language is P40745. And, and honestly, it's it's mostly telepathic. I actually have to move my vocal cords to speak this archaic language. That's it, Hudson. I will no longer have you interrupting my class. You can either stay quiet and learn the material the way the state wants you to, or you can log out and explain to your parents why you're no longer welcome in class. I get it, it's hard, but you do know that life is hard. Everything is hard. And this is not the job I signed up for. So either be quiet or finish the lesson and leave. Can I say something? What, Kyla? I think you're both right. Like, it's been really hard. And um, don't get me wrong. I love hanging out on the computer and stuff. Because it's like easier to do other stuff and whatever in class. I know I'm not the smartest girl in the room or whatever but like i think we all need to try harder to be nice to hudson he's never like got the whole school experience you know he got here late and like i'm sure there's a reason he's here or whatever and also he's super good at speaking like better than me and i only know english He's obviously super smart, so maybe we shouldn't, like, I don't know, shut him down when he talks about Pluto or something, you know? Well, thank you, Kyla. It's Kyla. But, like, whatever. Kyla. Sorry, I'll, I'll need to relearn that. Thank you, Kyla. That was um, strangely profound. You're welcome. In class, I am so sorry about today and about this year. 
Sometimes even teachers get too stressed and can't see the bigger picture. It looks like we're out of time today. Hudson, maybe even closer to the holidays so we can hear all about your quarter blog. It's Korg and Glorb. But yeah, yeah, I like that a lot. What about the extra points? I mean, how about this? How about I give you all the extra points? I think it's necessary for the year ahead. Class dismissed. You'll pay for this, Hudson, you weird little freak! Uh, question. Uh, uh, does she mean pay for it in, like, human dollars? Or, or is there another type of currency I'm missing? Don't worry about her. Honestly, she's, like, really into school for some reason. Yeah, I gathered. What did you say your first language was? In English, it was called, um, it, it would be called P40745. That sounds cool. I take French. It's totally lame. French? Yeah, it's like a love language or whatever. I, I've heard of this uh, love thing. Uh, they talk about it on the TV here all the time. Do you get TV on Pluto? Oh, we do, but it's called, um, uh, what would the translation be, uh, uh, floop de doop I, I think that's right. Oh my god, that's so weird. I mean, like, in the best way. Weird can be good? Yeah, weird can be so good. Can you teach me P40745? Well, well, it's mostly telepathic, so um, it may be kind of hard. Well, maybe. We can talk after school, like on FaceTime or something. You want to talk to me after school? Sure, why not? No one has ever asked me that before. Maybe you could teach me all about Pluto, and I could teach you about, like, America, culture, and junk well, that sounds really nice. Thank you, Kyla. Of course. That's my cell number. But you can, like, Facebook me or something on your school computer, too. I gotta go. Ms. Schwarbinski's class is next, and it's, like, the only one I like. We'll chat later, okay? Okay. Great job, everybody, great job. Next up tonight is Real Friends. And the setting is a Zoom meeting at a Saturday detention in the spring of 2020. Good morning, Principal Hughes. Is it? <clears throat> Mute your mic. Uh, mute yourself, Ms. Klein. And no phones. This is detention, not the prom after party. <sighs> Ms. Cooper, please, lights on. I need to know you're there. All right, looks like we have Michael Langley, Finley Miller, Emma Klein, uh, and Olivia Cooper. We're only missing, uh, of course, I say. Oh, Isabella, please. <laughs> it's okay. Shh, shh, shh. Hello? Hello, Mr. Wilson? Uh, this is Principal Hughes. Uh, Principal Hughes from Glenbrook High School. Yes. Uh, yes, your son has, 
your son, uh, oh, Isabel, please, honey. <laughs> your son has detention today. Yes, today. <clears throat> we are doing hybrid learning, but that doesn't mean. Yes, Mr. Wilson, he's coming up on 10 minutes. Well, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> All right, I do appreciate. Oh. Well. Oh. oh. All right, all right, all right. As we wait for Jacob Wilson, we have a few things we must go over. This is a new hybrid detention, so there are still some bumps in the road. Mr. Vernon couldn't make it today, so the responsibility has once again fallen on me. Now, I know we would all like to get back to our Saturday. Lord knows there are plenty of other things I could be doing, but. We are here. <laughs> I have opened up a shared Google Doc with you all. Listen, now you four are all brilliant and bright kids. I know this year has been hard, but it is important that you don't lose focus. Colleges aren't going to write this year off as a vacation, and you're on the wrong path to get there. Isn't that the plan for all of you I, to go to college and continue your education? That's what I thought. Oh, Mr. Wilson, so happy you can join us today. Please moot yourself. I'm glad you, we all understand each other. Mr. Langley, please catch Mr. Wilson up on the assignment. It smells like little Isabella here has a situation. I will be off screen, but that doesn't mean I can't hear you. The sooner this gets done, the sooner we can all get on with our lives. I think it's safe to say Michael should take the lead on this one. Everyone agree? Why me? You're the obvious choice. Aren't you like going to Harvard or something? That's Michael F. Like, I'm Michael L. I, I applied to Harvard, but I, I, I didn't get in. I, I, I did get into you know Notre Dame and, and, and Bucknell and, and a couple of others. Seriously, we got stuck with a stupid Michael. Wow, that's coming from the queen of public school. Shut up, Wilson. Sorry, my mistake. I don't really follow high school politics. Did Chelsea Delavan overthrow your throne? My apologies to the royal court. She did not. Shut up. Everyone, please, let's just take a deep breath. Michael, if you're not going to write the paper for us, then just stop talking. Yes, ma'am. Don't back down so quickly, stupid Michael. It only gives her more power. You are such an ass. I, I know you are, but what am I? Dude, leave her alone. None of us belong here except you anyway. Maybe that weird chick. You're on mute. You had something you wanted to say? Never mind. So if I'm the only one who belongs here, why the hell are you here? I don't have to answer to you, buddy. Okay, let's make one thing very, very clear. I'm not your buddy. I'm not your dude. I don't know you. You don't know me. And I like to keep it that way. We clear? Crystal. You don't have to answer for them, princess. They can do it themselves. Now, stupid Michael, pray tell, what is the assignment that we're supposed to be doing on this beautiful Saturday morning? Uh, we have to write an essay on where we want to be. Where we want to be? Like, right now? Not here, that's for sure. It's not specific, so I, I guess it could be next year for college or where the next <laughs> five years. Well, that's perfect. Thank you, stupid Michael. If you don't want to write the essay. Luckily for you, I'm a bit of a psychic. I can tell each and every one of you where you'll be in the next year or so. Well, I don't really know you up there. Who are you? Olivia Cooper? Well, Olivia, I can't speak for you since I've never seen you before in my life. Do you even go to this school? What kind of question is that? A serious one? Yeah, we have class together. Huh. Never seen you before in my life. Anyways, my evaluation of the rest of you, you'll find is pretty spot on. Stupid Michael, you'll go off to school just below an Ivy, like Bucknell and Notre Dame or something, the pressure of it all is going to get to you. You experience burnout so fast, you'll find yourself working somewhere like Dunkin' Donuts or Tim Hortons, where all that degree is going to do is collect dust on a wall somewhere. All right, that's enough. 
But princess, I'm not done. Finley, you have sports scholarship written all over you. Duke, perhaps? But you're not going to get in. You have to settle for state school. Oh, yeah? And where are you going next year? Juvie? That's what I thought. Maybe instead of harassing everyone in the call, you can just write your essay on how you'll be the same burnout you've always been. Yeah, how, wow, that sounds great, Finley. Uh, Principal Hughes, the detention has not only taught me the value of my free time, but it also taught me to abide by the stereotypes thrust upon me by society. You're lucky this is over the internet, dude, or I'd beat the hell out of you. <laughs> what, you think I'm kidding? No, I think I wouldn't fight you. Yeah, figures. Big man with a big attitude runs away from a fight. Oh, no, that's not why. If I fight you, you're dead, plain and simple. Yeah, yeah, sure. I don't know what kind of recreational activities you do at the Miller house, but I'm going to infer it's a little different than the way me and my pop interact. Infer. Big word for a burnout. In... Don't tell me you're going to stick up for this loser, Em. You don't have to stoop down to his level. That's all I'm trying to say. No, princess, it's fine. Let them stoop. It gets lonely down here. Let me ask you something, Finley. What'd you get for Christmas this year? New clothes? Maybe a neat football? One of those sweatbands you wrestlers wear? You are such a... Ugh. Banner year at the Miller household, I'm sure. My old man sold my bike to buy cigars and a six-pack. Yeah, right. Oh, don't worry. He gave me one, though. Told me to smoke up. Gee, I can't wait to grow up to be just like my old pops. Is that real? No way. It's all part of his image. I'm a lot of things, Miller, but I am not a liar. That's all you ever do. Really? Try me. Anybody want to ask me where the Shiner came from? from anyone anyone want to try me probably from a fight from one of your burnout friends don't talk about my friends why not you have no problem talking about anyone else's he hasn't talked about my friend how would you know well i don't have any and i would have made that correction wow oh my god you could tell us why you're in here excuse me I mean, then we can fact check that with Principal Hughes. I mean, it would be a good in indication if we can you know, trust him or not. Not a bad idea, Michael. Not so stupid now, are you, Michael? I don't have to prove anything to you. <clears throat> Sounds like that's our answer. Well, why don't you tell us why you're in here? Then maybe I'll feel more comfortable discussing why I decided to spend this lovely Saturday locked in my room. God, you're such a liar. Yeah, and you're such a- I guess a girl out. And what, pray tell, does that have to do with anything, stupid Michael? I, uh, I, I asked a girl out to prom, you know, computer prom, and well, she said no. No kidding. She didn't just say no, though. I mean, that would have been fine. I mean, not fine, but like, like, I, I would have been fine eventually, you know? But no, she and the, all the girls on the field hockey team changed their pictures in Zoom to my yearbook picture. It wasn't just my picture. They, they wrote loser in big red letters across it. So when I logged into class, all I saw was my, my face with, with loser across my face like, like seven times. That is so messed up. Ms. Henderson didn't even do anything about it either. She just said, that's not funny, ladies. Take it down. They didn't. Kept them up there all class while we were taking a test and... And... And what? I made a TikTok, okay? I, I made a mean TikTok calling them names and, and making fun of them. <laughs> I made it cyberbullying. <laughs> it's not funny! No, no, it's not funny. It's, it's just the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Way to be stupid, Michael. I got detention, and they got off with nothing. How is that funny? It's not. That's how it goes when you're a reject. The beautiful people get away with everything. And the second you fight back, they swat you down like a disgusting fly. Poetic. Well, if you have so much to say, why are you in here? It was this for suspension. I got a full scholarship to school. Duke, by the way, in case you're keeping score over there, Wilson. I can't risk getting kicked out before I start. Yeah, but you didn't answer the question. 
What? What did you do? Why does it matter? Well, you keep asking Jake. He's a liar and a burnout. I have nothing to prove. But apparently something to hide? Yeah, then come on. Tell us what you did. Why don't you say what you did, Emma? Not sure how you could get in trouble being queen of the school and all. You are one of the beautiful people. You have to promise not to laugh at me. Cross my heart. I got caught skipping class. Of course you did. The pandemic money must be burning a hole in your pants. I'm not skipping to go shopping. Yeah, right. I'm not. Last year, how many times did you skip? A few times a month? And you'd come back with a new bag or shoes or whatever? Okay, so I used to skip to shop, but I'm not doing that anymore. You can lie to them all you want, Em, but I know you. You don't know shit, Finn. Then prove it, princess. What are you here for? Nothing. Forget it. See? I wouldn't turn my camera on. What? Government security agencies can see through your camera through built-in back doors. So? So I put a sticky note on my camera so they can't spy on me in my bedroom. What are you doing in your bedroom that you don't want anyone to see? Making a hat out of tinfoil? Shut up! Do you ever say anything productive or even nice for that matter, Wilson? They can give you detention for not turning your camera on? I don't answer to you. I know it's hard for you to understand that, though. Honestly, I don't know if they can, but they did, so what does it matter? Teachers suck. Everybody sucks. Wow. Generalization much? It's true. We all suck. Even me. No argument there. You don't even know me. Or Finley. Or Michael. Stupid Michael, you mean. I didn't mean for that to turn into a thing. It's fine. Why do you do that? Do what? That. You just let anyone say any old thing to you. Stick up for yourself. But he's right. I, I am the stupider of the two Michaels. It doesn't make me a bad person. I, I'm just never going to go to Harvard. I'm just trying to help you. No one is ever going to take you seriously if you think so lowly of yourself. So if I walked around with fake confidence, you think those girls wouldn't have made fun of me publicly like that? I don't know. Maybe not. Or they will, because they're mean girls. Now who's making blanket statements? We all know it's true. Do we? We're losing focus here, people. We still don't know why Finley has joined us on this lovely Saturday. We all know they would rather be playing catch with their old man. You are so out of touch, Wilson. Sorry, I don't know what it's like to have a parent to give a shit about me. Last I checked, I didn't ask to be here. None of us did? No, princess. That's what I'm getting at. You get to log off your computers and tell your parents how lame and boring it was. And then tomorrow you get all get to go to brunch or lay around and watch TV or do homework or, I don't know, whatever Mortician Adams over there does in her free time. But me, I get to climb on my window, walk around the block till it gets dark, and hope old man Wilson isn't awake so I can sleep at night. You want to know why I'm here? I broke into the school because I didn't, couldn't stand another second in this house. What are you doing? Sending you my number. Why? Well, I consider you guys my friends now. I mean, if you ever need a friend, you can, you can always call me. Or, or text. I, I know people don't really call anymore. What? I, I don't know, dude. What do you think is going to happen on Monday? What do you mean? Everything is going to go back to the way it was before today. Everything always does. Why? Because it's the way it is. The politics of high school. So this is it? We'll always have Saturday detention? Pretty much. That's so shitty, Emma. Did you want an honest answer? Yes or no? We're not friends, Michael. We're all too different to ever be friends. What do you mean? Look at us. You're a nerd. Finley's a jock and Jake's a stoner and Olivia is Olivia. You're a stuck up rich kid. That's not fair. So it's not fair when someone calls you names, but you can sit here and tell stupid Michael you don't want to be his friend because 
why he's a nerd? You don't understand the pressure Finn and I go through every day. Do you know why that whole group of girls was mean to Michael? Because you have to go with what your friends say or you're the one on the outs. Then they're not really your real friends, are they? It's not fair, but it's the way it is. It doesn't have to be that way. Easy for you to say. I don't have any friends. That's not true. I have Michael now. Oh, how sweet. Will you shut up, Wilson? No one believes your little sob story. You're still a liar and a loser. Always have been and always will be. Miller, what did I say about talking? That we shouldn't talk, miss. Right. How did you do on your essay? Make any movement? Well, anyone? Anyone? Bueller? You did tell us not to talk. Oh, my God. I can't do this today. All of you finish these essays on your own time this weekend and send it in on Monday to Mr. Vernon. If you fail to send it in, there will be consequences. Everyone clear on this? Great. Okay, go enjoy the rest of your Saturday. So, what? That's it? Yes, so. We still have to write this essay, though. I'll, I'll do it. You don't have to, Michael. No, no, no. I'll do it. I, I want to. I, I want to be able to do something nice for my friends. Even if they act like a like a snob or, or act really tough or act weird or whatever. You're still my friends. Social politics be damned. Thanks, Michael. Yeah, thanks, man. See you in class. Um, were you being for real? With what? Why you're here today. You really want to know? Yeah, I do. I got caught sleeping in a nurse's, their nurse's office. Ask good old Principal Hughes who could rather send me back home than make sure that's what's best for me. What? How? This school's been on lockdown all year. I have my ways, which is probably why I've got Saturday detention till Principal Hughes retires. Why would you want to break into the school? I think you, of all people, would want to stay as far away from here as you could. Sometimes when you're trapped, you run to the only place that feels familiar to you. For me, it's this prison we call Glenbrook High School. You gonna be okay? I'll be just fine, princess. Emma, my name is Emma. You don't have to do this whole tough deck thing around me. Who says it's an act? Are you hungry? What? Food. Do you want some? Are you asking me out, princess? In your dreams. No, I get a discount at my job. I'm buying. And where, may I ask, is your job? Uh, McDonald's, right by the high school. Emma Klein is working at McDonald's now? Oh, how the mighty have fallen. You can call me by my name. You did. You called me by my name. I guess I did. Meet you there in town. Don't be late, Wilson. And up next, we have the Chevrolet. At Rise, Denise Delavan is trying to buy a car in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. She has made an appointment with, with a local used car dealership via Zoom to figure out what type of car she would like to buy. What she finds when she logs on surprises her. Um, hello? Um, hello? Uh, I think I had... 
the meeting's at six o'clock. Um, hello, I am here to buy a car. The meeting did say six o'clock. God, I hope I wrote down the right day. Oh, gosh, thanks. I think, thank goodness. Um, hi, I am here to buy a car. Miss Delavan, correct? Yes, correct. That is me. Thank you so much for doing this over Zoom with the pandemic and work. It has just been impossible. Earlier today, we saw Miss Adams walk away with her dream car, a 2013 Ford Focus. Okay. And now we have our last customer of the night, a 22-year-old receptionist from Houghton, New York. Uh, what is happening? Get ready for the most dramatic sale yet. It all starts now on the Chevrolet. Uh, am I on the right Zoom? Is this for Western New York Chevy? What? Tonight, Denise will choose between eight of our finest cars in the lot. Uh, hello, I don't understand what's going on. Denise, are you ready to meet Western New York Chevy's most eligible automobiles? So this is the right Zoom? Hi, Denise. My name is Jeep Wrangler. I'm a 2015 and I am ready to take my next owner off-roading through life. If you're worried about a bumpy road ahead, I am the car for you. You are one of the salespeople. They say pick a man, uh, a car that would move mountains for you. Not only will I move mountains, but I will drive you up to the top of them. Hey, Denise. I'm selling a Chevy Malibu today. I mean, I'm Chevy Malibu, and I'm a 2019. I am a reliable car, according to J.D. Power Associates, and have features like a backup cam and sunroof. If you're looking for a sedan, look no further. I may not be the flashiest car ever, but I will last a long time. Um, so this is just gonna keep going? Hi, Denise. My name is Toyota Camry. Yeah, can we speed this up? I really thought we'd just like tour a couple cars and that would be it. Listen, Denise, this pandemic has been hard on all of us, okay? We're just trying to make buying a new to you car more fun and exciting. Now, please, the cars didn't interrupt you. They did, and they're not cars. They're obviously salespeople. Denise, please. I guess I could see if the Toyota dealership is still open at my house. Just go over there. Ouch! It's six o'clock on a Tuesday, Denise, in the middle of a pandemic. You're lucky you got this appointment, so come on. Please, just play along for now. We promise you'll find exactly what you're looking for. Fine. As I was saying... I'm a ride that doesn't sacrifice style for comfort. Being a recently leased car, I have very low mileage. I have better miles per gallon than any of the other cars. And honestly, I'm a big catch. You're lucky the last contestant didn't grab me last time. Went with a Ford Focus, the traitor. Okay, next. Hey, Denise, this is Honda <clears throat> Odyssey, and I'm a 2013 with a whole lot of room for love. It's business in the front, party in the back with me. I feature automatic doors with fully functioning DVD player. I have the perfect car for someone who wants to start a family. Ranking high on the JD, Power Associates rating for safety. They say safe choice is boring. I say... The safe choice is the right choice. Well, howdy there, uh, little lady. You have got to be kidding me. Oh, I'm the 2020 Ford Raptor, 100% American made vehicle here to win your hearts. If you're looking for a car that enjoys long drives on the beach, I'm the car for you. Need help moving yourself to your first apartment or help from friends? I'm the car for you. Stuck in the snow? Not with me. I'm not only reliable, but a very powerful machine. And who doesn't want that, huh? 
Hey, Denise, I'm a 1999 Mercury Cougar. I'm from the trade-in lot here at Western New York Chevy. I don't have any crazy features or anything, but I do have a lot of heart. A big engine that can drive you for, far for less. I have the charm of the 80s and 90s wrapped up in my red exterior. I may not be the newest car on the lot, but I am certainly the coolest with the most style. I hope you consider me to be your next car. Uh, I'm not going to take up too much of your time. Um, I'm just a ne Nissan Altima looking to share the best years of my life with someone. I have some cool features, uh, backup cam. Uh, MP3 hookups and uh, oh, sunroof, all-wheel drive, and oh, well, you can see all, uh, you can see all that on my website. Look, I, I give you a smooth ride, and well, I I'd love to be the car that you end up with. Do I just pick one or? No. Uh, <sighs> let's bring out all the contestants. Now, Denise, after hearing the intros, you have to eliminate three cars right now. Is that something you're ready for? Yeah, what if I just want to pick a car? To make this the most dramatic season yet, you will ask each of your favorite cars if they will accept their keys. I don't have any keys. It's, it's a metaphor. A metaphor for what? Denise, you have seven cars in front of you, but only four keys to give. I don't have any keys to give. Whenever you're ready. Okay. Um, Nissan, you're gonna have this key. Good, good, but can you say, will you accept this key? It makes you seem more into it. But I'm not into it. Also, can you say their name twice? First time with the pause, and then second time, asking if they will accept the key. It adds to the drama. Whatever, fine. Nissan. Nissan, will you accept this key? I will. I really felt a strong connection with Denise. There was something about her that makes me really feel like I have a shot. What All right, Denise. You have three more cars to go. Um, Chevy. Chevy, will you accept this key? I will. She calls Nissan and Chevy first. They're obviously safe choices. Excuse me, I can hear you. I have a feeling she has a type. And lucky for me, her type equals Camry. This is so stupid. Um, Ford. Ford, will you accept this key? You betcha. Denise, this is your final key. Whenever you're ready. Um, Mercury. Mercury. Will you accept this key? I will. That means Toyota Camry, Honda Odyssey, and Jeep Wrangler. You did not receive a key. Take a moment, say your goodbyes. Why not me, Denise? I'm only 22. I don't need a family car right now. And 2013, you're coming up on 10 years so quickly. Um, sorry. It's okay. Good luck out there. You have some, um, you have some really great cars here. Good luck, Denise. What? Only four cars left. We'll be right back after the break. Break? I have to say that. It's, it's where the commercial goes. Commercial? What? Yeah, we got a deal to air this on the local news channels. We have sponsors and everything. Who is sponsoring a Zoom call about buying a car? Viper Karuma Karate Dojo, among other small businesses. They sponsor you? Yeah, and then they got a pretty sweet slot in advertising too. Oh my God. Are you ready to get back into it? Sure. We're back with our top four cars and with our Chevrolet, Denise Delavan. In this part of the episode, you will ask each car questions. And by the end of it, you have eliminated two more cars. Are you ready? I'm ready to buy a car right now. Great. All right. You can come back in now. Um, what is this? How am I supposed to know which car is which? You're not. That's the fun of it. Come on. I know you're young, but haven't you ever watched the dating game? 
The what? The popular 1970s show, The Dating Game. One woman asks three men questions, and at the end, they go on a date. Farrah Fawcett was a contestant. I have no idea what you're talking about. Kids today. Let's keep this moving. Denise, you can ask each card question. Just preface the question with bachelor number one. Okay. Um, bachelor number one, how many miles to the gallon? No, not boring questions like that. Real questions, deep questions. Actually, I I'd love to answer that if you don't mind, Brian. Go ahead, bachelor number one. Well, for city driving, uh, up to 28 miles per gallon. But highway driving, oh, I, I can go up to 39 miles per gallon. Thank you. That is a very helpful and nice answer. Yeah, you're welcome. Will you be doing any uh, city driving? Actually, not a lot. My college friends live all over the state, so I may do some highway driving. Denise, on to the next question. That's for number two. Same question. I am 29 miles per gallon city and 36 miles per gallon highway. How are you better in the city than bachelor number one, but worse for highway driving? I'll be honest. I have no idea. I'll have to call the manufacturer when I have a minute. Bachelor number three, same question. I get 17 city and 22 highway. Oh, uh, wow. That is a big difference from the other two. Well, the other two can't carry as much as I can. I need a lot of power from the engine, which unfortunately doesn't help the gas mileage. But you know what they say, here in America, bigger is always better. Um, I, I don't think size matters. Oh, you say that now, huh? Bachelor number four, same question. I am 24 city and 34 highway. Oh, uh, most of you are the same in that department. Okay. So this question is for bachelor number two and bachelor number four. What are some of your best features? Bachelor number two here. I'd say that I am stylish, but safe. I feature a backup cam and standard airbags. I have a sunroof. I'm sleek inside and out with tons of trunk space. I am a car that is genuine and real. I think that is what everyone is looking for especially in their first car, isn't it? I may not have every bell and every whistle, but I will get you where you need to go. And that is the truth. All right, the next question is for bachelor number one and bachelor number three. What is your worst feature? This is bachelor number one. Uh, I've had a few safety recalls, all of which have been taken care of. Uh, some people say I'm not as roomy as other cars, or that my trunk space doesn't hold enough. Uh, I don't come with a spare tire either. Uh, some people say I don't handle turns as nicely as, nicely as others. Uh, at the end of the day, I, I know I'm a good car. We, we all have flaws, and there's always a risk involved when buying a new car. It's just a matter of whether or not you're ready to take the leap. Thank you. Bachelor number three. I'll be honest with you. For what I do, I got no faults. I'm truly the best in my class, and anyone who thinks otherwise is wrong. I don't know my mileage doesn't quite match up to the other cars, but honestly, they couldn't do half the stuff I do. To me, it's worth a little bit extra in gas than it is to be driving something that underperforms. Okay. Um, last question. This is for everyone, so let's just go in order. I'm looking for a reliable car that will last a lifetime. How many years do you think we'll be able to spend together? Oh, I love this question. It feels so real. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to give you an honest answer. I don't know how many years we'll get to be together. It could be 10. It could be one. Driving is dangerous. And, and I can't tell the future. Uh, but what I can tell you is that we are going to have an amazing time together. I can tell you that I will drive 100,000 miles and I will drive 100,000 miles more just to be the car who drives 200,000 miles to drop you off at your door. <laughs> Thank you, Bachelor number one, for that answer. Bachelor number two. Bachelor number one said it best. There's a lot of risk when driving, so I don't want to promise you something I can't deliver on, but... 
what I will say is I can make it to 200,000 miles as well. And if you don't drive too much, are a safe driver and take care of oil changes and maintenance, I think we could be together for a long, long time. Thank you. Bachelor number three. Denise, I can tell you, I'll be around for a long, long time. 10, 20, 30 years, if you'll have me. I'm durable, I'm new, and I'm ready to start my life with you. And bachelor number four. Bachelor number one and number two stole my answer. (laughs) I'm on the older side of life, but in that life, I have been perfectly maintained. I'm running great, and I will hopefully continue to run this way for many years to come. Nothing is guaranteed, but I've never been in an accident and only had one other owner. I'm not like these other cars that think they'll live forever. You will be my last owner. And honestly, I would be honored if you'd have me. Oh, thank you. Denise, you have four cars left, but only three keys to give whenever you're ready. Bachelor number two. Bachelor number two, will you accept this key? I will. Oh, wow. I thought you were going to be someone else. Are you disappointed? No, pleasantly surprised. (laughs) Bachelor number four. Bachelor number four. Will you accept this key? I would love to. Thank you. I'm so happy she chose me. I was vulnerable and it really paid off. I think we might really have something here. Denise, you have two cars left, but only one key. Whenever you're ready. This is a really hard decision and I hope you both know I appreciate you being here today. Taking this kind of time to help a girl buy her first car is really nice on its own, but under the circumstances of the pandemic, it is truly amazing. That said, bachelor number one, bachelor number one, will you accept this key? I will. (laughs) That means bachelor number three, Ford, you have been eliminated. Please take a moment, say your goodbyes. I'm shocked that you kept an old piece of junk like Mercury Cougar over a brand new car. You say you're looking for reliability and style, but if that were the case, you would have gotten rid of them over me. That's harsh. Yeah, are you okay? I'm fine. They can have their opinion of me. I'm not here to make friends. I'm, I'm here to buy a car. We'll be right back after this message. Nice job. I see you're really getting into this. I've come to the conclusion that I'm not getting out of here anytime soon, so I might as well enjoy it. Uh, besides, it's it's nice to feel wanted. You got three great cars to choose from. Are you getting excited? Yeah, I'm actually having some fun now. That's perfect. I'm so happy to hear it. And we're back to the Chevrolet. Last key ceremony, Denise sent the Ford Raptor on a cross-country trip away from her heart. There are still three cars left. Nissan Altima, Chevy Malibu, and Mercury Cougar. Denise, we're going to give you some one-on-one time with the cars. Are you ready for that? Ready as I'll ever be. We'll start this off with Mercury Cougar. Good luck, Denise, and have fun. Hey, Mercury. Hi, Denise. I'm so excited to see you. I'll be honest, I I didn't think I would make it this far. (laughs) Honestly, you remind me of my dad's car and he had when we were growing up. He had a 94 Cougar. It was teal with a black roof. Sounds like an amazing car. It was. He used to strap me and my sister up in his car seats. Then we would drive out to McDonald's and get a large fry. And he had them over to me in the back seat. And we'd sing Beatles songs all the way there. Was your dad a Beatles fan? He was in the way that people appreciate the way that they changed music and the way music was made. I'm not sure we call him the biggest Beatles fan ever. (laughs) Honestly, I... I think we owned like four cassettes and Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band was one of them. I'm surprised you know what a cassette is. You're so young. <laughs> That's why, honestly, it was a great car. It lasted a long time. I, I think he got rid of it in like 2013. 
I thought he'd give it to me as my first car. I was pretty bummed. Just missed it. Yeah, by like two years. You're 99? Sure am. We're the same age. (laughs) Is that so? Yeah. It it feels almost like fate, you know? Is there anything else you want to know about me or, or anything else you'd like to tell me about you? No, I don't think I do. I think I know all I need to know. Great. Denise, thank you for taking the time to do this. I know you'll make the right decision. Thanks. See you at the big finale. (laughs) Hey, Denise, how are you doing? Good. We're getting close to the end. We are. I am really excited for you. Do you have any questions for me? Honestly, just one. Why should I pick you at the end of this? I'm sure Mercury and Nissan will say the same thing. I'm the best choice. I am reliable. I'm compact. I am perfect for a woman in their 20s to drive around in. I'll last a long time with proper maintenance. And isn't that what anyone is looking for? A car that will get you from point A to point B without falling apart on you. It's true. I am not here to say anything bad about the other cars. They're great. They really are, but so am I. I, even if I am overlooked sometimes. I know plenty of people with Malibus. Good, then you know it's a great choice. I do. Anything else? No, that'll do it. Thank you for your time, Denise. I'll see you in a bit. Hey, Denise, good to see you. Save the best for last. I'd like to think so. I only have one question for you. Why do you think you're the best choice for me? Well, this is gonna sound silly, but uh, you know, from the look on your face when I, when I first came on screen, <sighs> You look so excited that, that I was an option, and I, I'm a big believer of just going with your gut. I think that you're a woman who knows what she wants. I would just tell you to go for it. Do you think that strong feelings in the beginning are trustworthy, though? What do you mean? Well, I feel like maybe I did. Maybe I do feel that way, but if I make an impulse decision based on feeling and I miss some of the facts, what if I do that? Well, it doesn't feel like an impulse decision. I, I, I'm not gonna question why you picked Mercury over some of the newer cars, but, but it must've been a gut decision. I, I'm not judging you either, but, but, but there's a reason you kept them around. And well, there's a reason you kept me and Chevy around too. So I, I think you just really need to trust yourself. And if that's with me, great. I, I know I would love it if you picked me. I. I think we would make a really, really great team for a really long time. Well, that's just my two cents anyway. Thanks, Nisa. You're welcome. Uh, we're almost out of time, I think. Yeah, but I think I know what I want. I'm sure you do. Good luck, Denise. This is huge, and I can't wait to see what you do. Denise? Are you ready to pick your first car ever? I, I think I am. All right, let's bring them back in. Denise, you started your appointment with seven potential cars. We are now down to our final three. In just a moment, we will hear the car you have chosen to pick as your very first car that you yourself own. What's this? In the biggest twist of the day, another car has entered the waiting room. Hold on one moment. Han, Han, it is moi, Toyota Kimi, I mean Corolla, here with the key to Z- Denise Delavan's heart. I am a 2017. This is unreal. It is, in fact, real, mon ami. Is no one else going to acknowledge that this is just a Toyota in a different hat? No one? Just, just me? Japanese car. Why is she doing a French accent? (laughs) 
It is the only accent I can do. Denise, it looks like the Toyota Corolla would like to join the competition, but you only have one key left. We can do some one-on-one -on -one time with the Toyota Corolla if you'd like. No, I can... no, no. I'll, I'll save us a, a lot of time. Uh, I sent you packing once and I'm just going to do it again. But No, no, I don't want to hear it. Jeez, does this tactic ever work? Get sent away, whatever reality TV show, what makes you think my mind changes? I, I have better mileage than any of these cars left. You haven't even given me a chance. It doesn't matter. I don't want a Toyota. Not a Camry, not a Corolla, not even a RAV4. I'd say I'm sorry, but I'm not. I'm spending a lot of money here. I, I'm making a huge commitment, and I don't need my integrity questioned by some car salesman. You keep the mercury over a car that lasts much longer? Huh? Yes, and that is my decision. Brian, I would really like it if the Toyota exited the meeting. You heard the lady. Better luck next time, Toyota. I'll never hit my goal at this rate. Sorry for that interruption, Denise. It's fine. There are three cars left, but only one key. Whenever you're ready. It just, I just want to tell each of you that you're wonderful cars. I would buy all three of you if I could, but unfortunately I can barely afford one. I know you'll all find a good home, and even if it's not with me. That being said, Mercury, you are an amazing car. You have so much to offer, and you're really a true classic. Being with you made me feel safe. Put me back in the 90s. You remind me so much of my childhood, and I had the best time growing up. But unfortunately, I am looking for something new, and as much as I want you, I, I think I need something different. I'm going to tell my dad about you, though. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe I will become a Delavan one day. I'm just not today. I'm sorry, Mercury Cougar. You've been eliminated. Please take a moment. Say your goodbyes. Thank you, Denise. Honestly, I am thrilled to even make it this far. I felt the junkyard looming in the distance and almost completely gave up on anyone wanting an old car like me. But Denise, you gave me hope. Hope that someone might want me someday. And I honestly can't thank you enough for that. And now it is down to the final two. Denise, whenever you're ready. This is really tough. You're both great cars, reliable, new, high tech. Honestly, everything I've ever wanted in a car. Chevy, you're a great looking car and a safe one at that. I know you'll last a long time and you'll get me from place to place, whether that be to work or on a trip or a trip across the state. <sighs> Nissan, you're also a beautiful car. When I saw you, it felt like love at first sight. Everything with you feels so easy and natural. I do fear that I am letting passion club my decision-making with you, but you've been upfront and honestly with me through this process, you took the risk right out of it. It meant possible elimination and I really respect that. And this is so hard. Nissan, Nissan, will you accept this key and be my car? I will. I absolutely will. I'm sorry, Chevy, you've been eliminated. Please take a moment, say your goodbyes. It's all right, Denise. I understand. It wasn't meant to be. Thank you, guys. You have a great car there, Denise. The winner of today's last sale is the Nissan Altima. Denise, how are you feeling? I feel great. This was actually kind of fun. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. We're going to send you to a breakout room one with your Nissan Altima to go over the paperwork and credit check for you. Thank you again, Denise, for being our final contestant of the day on the Chevrolet. And thank you, America, for joining us in another thrilling journey of the Chevrolet. Tomorrow, we'll have seven more eligible car owners coming to find the car of their dreams for a reasonable price. Do you know someone who is in need of a new ride but is uncomfortable coming to a dealership due to the pandemic? Or they just would like some pizzazz with their car sales? You can apply for an appointment through our website, 
thechevrolet.wny.com. Until then, I'm your host, Brian Henderson. Good night and stay safe. <laughs> so with that it is 9 10 we will not take up any more of your time I just want to introduce our actors we have justin we have james we have queen virginia caden <laughs> heather ellen sarah jess uh, i was in it <laughs> thank you to our <laughs> directors Amy. and your dallas <laughs> Yeah, my name is Dallas. <laughs> uh, thank you for everyone at home watching. A couple of announcements before we close out. We are having a call for directors for our January production, which will be posted soon. If you are interested, make sure to keep an eye out. Also, we are accepting short plays from local playwrights for our January in-person production until November 25th. If you have any submissions, send them to inclusive fear of WNY at gmail.com. Also, we are bringing the tradition of Chris scary stories at Christmas back. <laughs> Last year's it was Wonderful Life with Zombies. Started the jump, so this year we're taking the leap to go various versions of A Christmas Carol. You can join us on December 18th at 8 p.m. right here on Facebook Live. It's going to be a lot of fun. Make sure you join us there. Yes, and yes, finally, yes. our next in-person production will take place January 20th through the 22nd at the Williamsville Meeting House. More information is coming soon, so make sure you stay tuned. It's <laughs> kind of outdated. Make sure you're paying attention to Inclusive Theater of Western New York. That's and right. Yeah, and you get to see our... WNY Improv in the intermission. Yay! 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 Western New York Improv! Yeah. <laughs> all right. So with that, thank you all again. Uh, stay safe, stay healthy, and without you all, uh, there is no theater on Zoom or theater at all. So thank you for That's right. staying committed to the art, and we greatly, greatly appreciate it. Have a great night. Stay safe, stay happy, be healthy. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> happy Thanksgiving, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Thanksgiving. <laughs> Yay. <laughs>